Okay, so welcome. Uh, now I'm going to do a demonstration called Expanding Universe and the Hubble Law. I have this balloon here that I've taken. It's a nice big latex balloon and I've actually labeled a bunch of galaxies on there, put black dots for galaxies. All right, so the balloon looks like this, like this. And then I put a bunch of dots. Through the middle, I put a dot called the Milky Way Galaxy. I labeled it. You can see here the Milky Way is in the center. Then the galaxy to the right of there, uh, every three centimeters, I put a galaxy. I labeled it galaxy one, galaxy two, and then galaxy three. Then on the other side, galaxy four, galaxy five, galaxy six. And the original distance between them is uh, the initial three centimeters. From here to here, 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 three. From here to here, three. From here to here, three. Besides that, I also put a bunch of other galaxies, about three centimeters, uh, kind of made a whole bunch of galaxies, about three centimeters from each other. So you can kind of see it looks like this, 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 a whole grid. Okay. Then I'm going to blow up this galaxy, blow up this universe, and you can see how the space expands. When Edwin Hubble proved that the universe is expanding, he didn't just prove that galaxies are moving away from us, which they also do. Galaxies have relative motion with each other. But he actually proved that the space between galaxies is expanding. So even if galaxies don't have any relative motion, but their distance between each other is going to get larger because space is expanding. So this is what it means to say the Big Bang Theory and the Hubble Law, right? So what I've done here, I've already blown up a white colored balloon, blown it up to kind of a small size. So this would be the situation in the early universe. The, the universe is not too large. You, and then what I'm going to do is measure the distance between the galaxies, but the distance between the galaxies should be getting larger as the universe is expanding. So this distance should be larger than three centimeters. And they're all moving away from each other. So no galaxy can say that they're at the center because every galaxy, to them, it looks like the other ones are moving away from them, right? All the galaxies looks like they're moving away from each other. So there is no center to the universe, okay? Then I've blown up another balloon about two times bigger than that, maybe even more than two times. So it looks like this. Uh, then this is a uh, galaxy uh, one, two, three, Milky Way galaxy here in the center, number four, five, six. Then you got all the galaxies. You can see the distance between them is larger. But now something interesting did happen. It uh, gives me the chance to teach you about uh, homogeneity, something called homogeneous. This balloon did not blow up homogeneous in a homogeneous fashion. This side still kind of stayed small, whereas this side did most of the enlarging. The universe is not like that. The universe is enlarging in a homogeneous fashion in such a way as the distance, all the distances should be getting larger. On this balloon, this side got larger, whereas this side, it kind of stayed smaller together, right? So it gives me a chance to teach about homogeneity. If the universe had done this, then these people will know that they're at the edge of the universe, right? They'll have a special place in the universe. Right? They'll say, oh, the distance between us didn't grow as much as the farther distances. So they can say, oh, we're different than them. Right? But the way that the universe actually grew is that it grew in such a way that all the distances grew and there is no such thing as the center to the universe. So there's two concepts called is isotropic and homogeneous. The other thing is no direction should be preferential too. This one, this direction, they're all in, they're getting larger. This direction is not getting larger the same way. So not only is this not homogeneous, it's also not isotropic. This direction is different than this direction. These distances have all gotten larger. These distances have gotten larger, but these distances have not gotten as large. And I'm going to actually take this red balloon and I'm going to make this even larger than the yellow one. I'm going to blow into it here during the video. And the reason I chose this for the red is as the universe is enlarging, the largest size, you can see the redshift of galaxies, right? The, the light coming from galaxies is redshifting and the universe is looking more or less red. Okay, so I've chosen the red color. So let's blow into this. And 
I'm going to do it so that as I'm blowing it, it, you can kind of see the galaxies moving away from each other, uh, the black dots here, right? And you can kind of focus on the black dots and see them moving apart. Now, this is the largest possible universe that I could do. I felt like God over there, right? <laughs> Making the universe, enlarging it to the, the size that it is currently, right? And what's going to eventually happen, we now have evidence that the universe is expanding. So it's going to get even larger and larger than this. Right? But whereas these ones have gotten farther apart. This is four. This is the Milky Way galaxy. Right, and then this is one, two, and three. It's kind of tends to not enlarge as much on this side. Well, if I blow it up more, if I had a machine that I could really blow up, these things could get really large. And then you can kind of see maybe we'll eventually get homogeneous and isotropic. So now let's determine the distances. You see, this is this is much bigger than this, right? Then you can see this one is the original universe. This is uh, smaller than this. So this could represent the size of the universe 4 billion years after the Big Bang, right? 4 billion years. So the white one could be 4 billion years after Big Bang, right? And then the yellow one could be the size of the universe uh, 8 billion years after the Big Bang. This is, and then the red is the present state of the universe, it's, which is about 13.7 billion years. The Big Bang happened 13.7 billion years ago, so about 14 billion years ago. So the red one is going to be the... Uh, okay, so you can see about 4, 8, and 13.7. Now, since this is so large, that proves that the universe is expanding, right? In the 4, 4 5 billion years, ever since the yellow one, the universe is enlarging so much faster. And if we go four or five more billion years, this red is going to be huge because the universe is accelerating and it'll be the size of maybe this whole board, right? The size of the universe is accelerating faster and faster. So the next thing we could do is measure the distances between the galaxies using this string. Let's start with the white one. The, I'm going to measure the distance between the Milky Way and uh, the galaxy number one with the string. Just put my finger on it. Okay, and then measure it on, against the ruler. That's going to be about um, four centimeters. So remember I said originally the distances started out three centimeters. Okay. And then the distance between uh, the Milky Way and uh, galaxy number two is going to be eight centimeters. And then the Milky Way and galaxy number four, uh, galaxy number three, is 11 centimeters. Eleven centimeters. Now, if it had grown homogeneously, this really should have been twelve centimeters, right? Because it was four, eight, and then the, the next one should have been twelve. But because the size didn't grow as much and expand, the it became eleven. So we can change this to twelve centimeters. And then on the other side, let's see what the numbers are. Okay, so you can see what happened then. So we can say. The velocity of the galaxies is what? Well, the original distance was three centimeters, right? The original distance was three centimeters. Now their distance uh, is four centimeters. So now the distance, what's the velocity of galaxy number one with respect to the Milky Way? How far has the galaxy number one moved? Well, its original distance was three. Now its distance is four centimeters. So galaxy number one uh, it has moved a distance of 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3 centimeters, right? So let, let's call the time between here and here one second. So even though we call this 4 billion years, just for our demo, let's say it took me one second to blow up the balloon from its original 
uh, position to when it was this size. Let's say it took one second, right? So one second. So what would be the velocity of galaxy one with respect to the Milky Way? So that would be one centimeter per second. Okay, what would be velo uh, the velocity of galaxy number two? Its distance is eight centimeters now. And then its original distance was six centimeters, right? Three and three, six centimeters over one second. So the galaxy number two, is distance now is eight, and it used to be six. So it's moved twice the distance away from you as galaxy number one, right? So that's a very interesting concept. Because the galaxy number two is twice as far away from you, the distance it has moved during that time is twice the distance that galaxy one has moved. So now this is gonna be two centimeters per second. Okay, how about galaxy number three? So galaxy number three, uh, it's now 12 centimeters. And its original distance was what? Three, six, nine, nine centimeters. And then this is one second. So now this is gonna be three centimeters per second. So what do we notice here, a pattern? The farther away a galaxy is from you, the faster it is moving away from you. This is the Hubble law, right? So we can say the velocity of a galaxy is equal to proportional to the distance of the galaxy from you. And then the constant of proportionality is known as the Hubble constant, right? So we can say the Hubble constant. So now we can make a graph of this. The vertical axis will represent the velocity of the galaxy in units of centimeters per second. And then this is the distance in units of centimeters, right? So the first galaxy, its distance away from you, four centimeters, right, at the point where you're measuring the galaxy at, the, at this time, right, its distance from you is four centimeters. What is its velocity? Its velocity, its average velocity from you, the velocity of recession is one centimeter per second. So we can say here, one centimeter per second. So this is one centimeter per second. The, the, the galaxy that's eight centimeters away, is going to be moving away from you two centimeters per second. So you see we're getting a straight line. And a galaxy that's 12 centimeters away, right, 12 centimeters, that galaxy is moving away from you at uh, three centimeters per second, right? Three centimeters per second. So we have four, eight, and um, three. We have a straight line. What's our Hubble constant in this ex little experiment? The Hubble constant is the slope of that line. Okay, the slope of that line. So what would the slope of that line be? I guess you can just take any rise or run, right? Slope is known as the Hubble constant. So in the Hubble constant, in this little experiment that I performed, the rise is equal to what? Two centimeters per second minus one centimeter per second, right? Two centimeter per second. That's the, this data point, right? minus the one centimeter per second. Divide that by the distance, eight centimeters minus four centimeters. So the Hubble constant is gonna be what? So it's gonna be two minus one, that's gonna be one centimeter per second divided by four centimeters. And then that's gonna be seven centimeters is gonna cancel. That's fourth, what's the units of the Hubble constant? The centimeter and the centimeter cancel and you get one over seconds. Now there's an important property of the Hubble constant. There's an interesting thing. Look at my Hubble constant. It's in units of one fourth, and the units is one over seconds. If I invert the Hubble constant, what am I gonna get? If I invert my Hubble constant, one over h, I'm gonna get four seconds. So it's in, it's in units of time. What does that tell me? That tells me the largest amount of time that it would have taken from the beginning of the Big Bang to this state when the w balloon was white. So imagine when the, this is the balloon's state when it's in the white stage, right? If you were to all the way crunch all the way until the balloon is zero size, how long would that be, right? So this would be giving you the Hubble time. It's known as Hubble time. And it represents the largest amount of time that it takes for the balloon from a zero state, from a zero singularity, to blow up and equal this size. It's four seconds. Well, that kind of makes sense. Think about it. 
originally in my flat balloon, which I hadn't blown up, the distance between the, blue, uh, the galaxies was three centimeters, right? From three centimeters to four centimeters, it took one second, right? From here to here. I was assuming it's, the time is one second. So if you go back one second from this state, your, the distance between the galaxies is three centimeters. How many seconds do you have to go back in order for the distance between the galaxies to equal nothing, right? If you go back two seconds, the distance between them is going to be two centimeters. Three seconds, the distance between them is going to be one centimeter. Four seconds, the distance between them is going to be nothing. So the whole universe will crunch into a zero size. So if the time interval from here to here is one second, it makes sense that the time interval to the beginning of the Big Bang is four seconds. That's why when astronomers want to calculate the Hubble constant, they want to know the exact value of the Hubble constant down to very, very minute detail because if they reciprocate the Hubble constant, it tells them the, the farthest back that the Big Bang could have ever started, the farthest back in time, okay? Okay, now let's go to my yellow uh, galaxy. Now the ga yellow galaxy represents the size of the galaxy like about 8 billion years after the Big Bang. So let's say that's two seconds now. Right. Expanded equal amounts, six centimeter, six centimeter, six centimeter. So that uh, what I'm going to assume is the right ones. Let's assume they also expanded the same. They would have also been six. So then change these all to six. And I say, okay, if the universe expands homogeneously, now their distances between each other is six. So now we can say, what is the velo velocity of galaxy number one? So its original distance was 3, now it's 6, so 6 minus 3 over 2 seconds. So let's assume the time period is double the time period. So then I, I'm going to get here 3 over 2 centimeters per second. So 1.5 centimeters per second. All right? So then uh, velocity of uh, galaxy number 2. Then, all right? So you can kind of see instead of becoming uh, one centimeter per second, two centimeters per second, three centimeters per second, it's one and a half, three, and four and a half. But now they're moving even faster, right? The galaxies are moving faster away from you because why? Because they've moved away, farther away, right? So now what does the graph look like? So now we have here distance and velocity. Okay, the farther away the galaxy is, the faster it's moving. In the one second time when the Big Bang was, when the universe was smaller, the farthest galaxy in that balloon, right, which was number three, was uh, six centimeters away, right? So that one was moving three centimeters per second away from you. But now, in this galaxy, this uh, galaxy is uh, 18 centimeters away from you, right? 18 centimeters away. So now it's moving faster, uh, four and a half centimeters per second. Now let's get to the state of the universe in the present, the red one. Both sides are the same. So the distance now is going to be uh, eight centimeters minus the original distance, which was three over three seconds. So five over three, which is gonna be 1.67 centimeters per second. So its final distance was eight. Its original distance was three over three seconds. Okay, then we have uh, galaxy number two, it moves 16 centimeters. The original distance was six centimeters over three, 10 over three, which is 3.33 centimeters per second. Now, recent evidence of uh, using different methods, especially uh, distant, far distant supernovae, has shown that when you go really very far out galaxies, this graph tends to do like this. It kind of starts to plateau it shows there are more data points down here. So what does that mean? That means that the graph of velocity versus distance shows that for, for very far away galaxies, the galaxies are not moving as fast as they should according to this straight line. So what does that mean? That means that when the universe was younger, those are the galaxies that are very far away, those galaxies were not moving as fast as the galaxies that are, that are closer to us. So this straight line graph pattern is kind of starting to plateau just a tiny bit. This is the evidence that shows that the universe is expanding. The fact that the very far away galaxies are not moving as fast as they should, so the slope of the velocity versus distance graph is not as steep 
as it is for the galaxies that are close to us. So this is also another good thing that you can discuss from this velocity versus distance uh, graphs. Not only the Hubble time, the Hubble constant, but also the fact that the universe is expanding more and more faster nowadays than it has in the past. Okay, so you can see here with some balloons blowing up, blowing them up, measuring their distances. You can get a little bit idea of the the Hubble law, how the universe is expanding. You can mention about the the redshift of galaxies. You can talk about the Hubble constant, the Hubble time, and you can also talk about the fact that the universe is expanding. Okay. Thank you very much.